underground in a landfill. And finally, we have to study the non-recyclable fraction. So this is operating. This facility is operating in Nova Scotia. And uh, uh, what we need now is to introduce a zero-waste research center in facilities like this. Kapanri, and I'm sure Rosano will talk more about this, has already started a zero-waste research center. Very small, but it's a, it's a beginning. Now, we need our local professors and students who are interested in sustainability. This is your laboratory. This is the laboratory of our current mistakes. Uh, this is, these are the symptoms of an illness. And we have to study the symptoms. We have to cure that illness. And we need the brightest minds in our society doing this. So the message that we have to send to industry is if we can't reuse it, if we can't recycle it, if we can't compost it, then you shouldn't be making it. And when you've got communities like Usabil, which are over 89% diversion. You have the moral authority. You have shown that you can take responsibility in your community, but you can't get to zero by yourselves. And that's why you have to say to industry, if we can't reuse it, recycle it, or compost it, then industry shouldn't be making it. We need better industrial design for the 21st century. Ultimately, waste is a design problem. Nature makes no waste. It's a human invention. It's bad human design. And we have to change that. So we need better industrial design. That's step, step nine. And of course, that's going to be backed up at the very end with an interim landfill, a temporary landfill, to receive now the biologically stabilized organic waste and the non-recyclable fraction. So I think one thing in this area, you already have municipally owned landfills. Let's start building these facilities in front of those landfills. Let's intercept now. Let's introduce discipline. Let's introduce what nature has, feedback mechanisms. We need a feedback mechanism on bad industrial design and bad purchasing habits. So there again then are all our 10 steps backed up with the temporary landfill, which by 2020, we hope, is receiving very, very little waste. And you'll notice, oh, just to see how far we've come, in San Francisco, which has a population 850,000, very little space, they have reached 78% diversion from landfill by 2011, uh, without using incinerators. In fact, 78% reduction is greater than you get with incineration. With incineration, you get a 75% reduction because 25% is less as ash. So think about it for a moment. There were people trying to build an a, a incinerator in San Francisco in 1985. They didn't succeed. But if they had done, they would have squandered a huge amount of money they would have produced a lot of toxic air emissions. They would have been left with a lot of toxic ash. They would have created very few jobs. But instead, they took this path, the zero waste path, and they're doing very well, a greater reduction than they would have done with incineration. And yes, their goal for 2020 is zero waste. Now, I'm not suggesting for one moment that America as a whole is good on waste. It is not. We have so much space. We have many, many landfills. But I will also tell you the best things on the environment always begin in California. So it's very exciting to see these very good programs in California because that will tell us that they're going to cross the United States. Now, Italy is the other, one of the other very exciting places for zero waste over 200 communities are getting more than 70% diversion using door-to-door -door collection systems. And some of them are doing it extremely quickly. For example, Navarra, a population of 100,000, 70% in just 18 months. And Salerno, near Naples, a population of 145,000, not so much smaller than uh, San Sebastian, was able to get to 72% 
in just one year. And then uh, Villafranca d'Asti, a population of 3,000, 85% diversion. But the record, as of a couple of years ago, was in Spain. Ursabil reached went from 28% to 86% in seven months. I visited it yesterday for the first time. They're now up to over 89% diversion. <laughs> so zero waste, zero waste is a new direction. It's, uh, we have to move from the back end of waste disposal to the front end of industrial design. And so if you look at these, these 10 steps again, it begins with everyone and begins with these. Everyone's 10 fingers are necessary to sort out to begin with. If you mix, you have waste and there's no solution. But if you separate, then you can compost, recycle and so on. So we begin with everybody's fingers, but we're going to end here with the brightest minds in our society, our professors and students at universities and our best, best designers in our industry, tapping into the best minds. And we need to tap into the best minds because this isn't just about waste. This isn't just about zero waste. This is using zero waste as a stepping stone to sustainability. So the conclusions on this, this program is we don't need mega landfills and incinerators. There is a better alternative, which is called the zero waste strategy. It's better for our health, less toxics. It's better for our economy, more jobs, many more jobs. It's better for our, I, I missed out one, it's better for our universities, more meaning. We're giving more relevance to universities if we get them involved in a community problem and get them involved in a global problem in a concrete fashion that gives more meaning to our professors and students. It gives our children more hope about the future. Here is a plan to make, so, so that they've got something left for themselves and their children and their grandchildren and their great-grandchildren. And finally, it's better for the planet because it is more sustainable. Incineration is simply not sustainable. Landfills are not sustainable. Zero waste is moving towards sustainability. And that's another reason that we want our professors and students involved because we need to link the success and the psychology, the good psychology of curing the waste problem and link it with these other aspects that we have to get right for sustainability, which are more, if you like, more remote from the ordinary person. Waste is very close to, to all of us. So we can link uh, zero waste with industry, sustainable industry, with better industrial design. We can link uh, zero waste to sustainable agriculture through composting. We, can, we are linking with education because we're integrating higher education into the zero waste program. We can link sustainable ag architecture because of deconstruction of old buildings and using secondary materials in new buildings. We can link to sustainable energy uh, with anaerobic digestion of the organic fraction, but most importantly, we have to give the message to government that incineration is not sustainable. It's not alternative energy. It's not green energy. This is a, a, a waste of taxpayers' money to subsidize incinerators. We, need, we can link to sustainable economic development. Uh, incineration is one big black box. Zero waste is hundreds of little green boxes, hundreds of little businesses that can grow up providing services and recapturing materials and using those materials in the local community, uh, hundreds of green boxes. And we can link to sustainable community development with those reuse and repair centers because one of the things that those reuse and repair centers do is they attract people. People enjoy going to these reuse uh, centers. They're fun. And that's where you're going to meet uh, interesting people. So we can use these reuse repair centers to regenerate communities, to regenerate the village inside our large cities. So there are many ways then that we can link 
success of the zero waste movement with other aspects of sustainability. And thank you very, very much for listening.